Welcome back to The Lemon Factor. I'm Chad, and today we are going to mount our K-Tuner version two, the five inch touch display in our project car, the 2019 Honda Accord 2.0 Touring. So in our last video, if you haven't taken a look, I'll leave a link in the description below. I went through the single best performance modification you can make on your 10th generation Honda Accord, and that would be an ECU tune whether it's from K-Tuner, Honda, or even J JB4. You get one of those, you are going to feel the additional horsepower and torque. I installed our first tune, one of the base maps that comes from K-Tuner, and I was thoroughly impressed and had a lot of fun testing it out. That, that was from a standstill. Um, <laughs> let's just put a smile on your face. The car has a significant amount of additional horsepower and torque, and we will get it on a dyno here soon. But for today, we're going to mount the display, and then we're gonna take a look at the display's layout. You can select from a number of different sensor outputs uh, and data points coming from the car that you can monitor. We'll go through that list and I'll identify what I believe is the most important information for you to monitor on your project car. So if you're interested in seeing more, then stay tuned. Before we proceed, please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, turn on the notifications. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, let me know why. So here's our five inch touch display. That is the K-Tuner version two. And one of the things that I notice is that this unit is fairly heavy. And the reason why I bring that up is if we're looking at different options to mount this up on the windshield, I do believe over time, whatever suction cup I use will probably eventually fail. That concerns me. I don't want the K-Tuner getting damaged. You'll need a small screwdriver. Remove the three small screws, then take this back plate, put it into position and just re-screw it. So you're gonna attach it by sliding the K-Tuner in to the back of your attachment. This is the one that I bought, rather lightweight, plastic. You know, it's not very substantial, but it also wasn't very expensive. You know, we could do a couple options. We can use the suction cup to mount this up on the windshield. That does concern me a little bit, given the weight of the unit itself. I feel as though eventually the suction cup will fail and the unit will fall and I definitely don't want it to be damaged. It also came with a mounting plate that you can mount it actually on the dash. And I think I wanna do that. However, the only problem is it's really cold here and I wanna make sure the double-sided tape has uh, a warmer climate for it to bond with the dash as well as the back of this. So I think I'm gonna wait to do that until it gets a little bit warmer outside. So I'm gonna take my chances. I'm gonna mount this to the windshield. I think in doing so, it also gives me some time to make sure that my mounting location is exactly where I want it to go. So as far as locations are concerned, what seems to be a standard is for people to mount their K-Tuner somewhere about here on the windshield, which is fine. Kind of like the idea of potentially putting it up here. I have some seen some people mounting it up here. That would take away your access to your wireless charging pad, you know, any storage or your, your USB. But you know, it is a possibility. It does sit in nicely. So that is an option. Just remember, you're gonna have the cord, so the cord has to be fed. One thing that I like that's neat is this is just the right size that you can fit. When you're not using it, it fits perfectly in there. This suction and the sticky part of this uh, seems really secure. 
you know, I do like that it's attached with the T mount that you can pop this off and store, you know, stow it away. Line of sight, it's good. Only thing with that is now you can see the cord. It's kind of draped over this. It's not too bad. I think if I end up keeping it here, I'll, I'll create a better situation to tuck that cord away. Why don't we talk about setting up the actual screen itself. We're gonna go through the different display views that you can choose from. And then we'll talk about the different data points and sensor information that you can regularly monitor real time. So this is, this is real time information coming from your car in the display itself. Um, I'll highlight the ones that I think are most important and the ones that I'm going to use. Uh, click on the K tuner up at the top left, then click on gauges. And as you can see here, K tuner gives 13 different gauge layouts. And for the most part, they all follow the similar, a similar theme in that it gives you area within the layout to show data. And those are the data points we're gonna go through, whether that's your air fuel ratio, your boost pressure, throttle position, etc. Let's take a look at each one of these in order. And now we can set our uh, nine data points. You can set more. Uh, there's, you can scroll, I believe, two or three menus over. So here's a list that I took from the K-Tuner website. And this is just their list of abbreviations. But for the most part, these abbreviations are what you can choose from uh, as far as the data points or the sensor outputs. The data points that I am most interested in is the manifold pressure, the map. Um, I do want to know what type of, or how much boost pressure uh, we're producing. Next is the TPS or throttle position sensor. So this is, as it sounds, it's as a percentage, how much you are, you're depressing on the gas pedal. Obviously, if it's all the way down to the ground, that is fully open and that's 100% TPS. Next is the intake air temperature. I eventually, I would like to see what my intake air temperatures are. Wideband, factory wideband uh, value. So this is the air fuel ratio, which I think is very important. We have the VSS, the vehicle speed sensor, the K count. Uh, or the knock count, which is important. I would definitely want to see that. And then the diff press, which is the direct injection fuel pressure. We'll go to layout and text item one. And I will put that as my boost pressure map. So there's my boost pressure. So it does go across, so text number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So with that, I'm going to set the rest of them. Okay, I went in and I set up all of my data points and you can go into the settings and change the color. At the top left, I have my boost pressure in PSI and you can go in and change the units of measure, whether it's PSI or bar. Very highly customizable. Layout color is where I changed the background. Can't see it now, but the green for the tachometer, you can pick different colors here. You can change the brightness of the screen. As I mentioned, you can change your units. 
units for speed, so miles per hour or kilometers, um, your boost pressure, your temperature, Celsius, Fahrenheit, etc. This was neat, I like this, tachometer RPM. So I already forget what the default setting was, but it was somewhere around 9,000 RPMs. We don't need it that high. Our, our red line in the 10th gen Accord is actually, what is it, 6,700 RPMs. Instead of having all of that real estate, we, I've shrunk that and put it down to 7,000 RPMs, which is nice. I think that goes really well with the, uh, the black background um, with my center gauges, as well as with your navigation uh, and entertainment. Nicely in line with line of sight. Just a glance to the right and I have all of my measurements. So the next thing we wanna do is, as you can see at the top here, there are five little LEDs that are currently not lit up right now, but you can set those LEDs to light up based on different parameters, such as RPM. So, so if you're interested in finding out how to set those LEDs and what I'm gonna end up setting my LEDs for, then watch the next video. But thank you for watching and until next time.